Okay, this might just be the coolest project I've ever made with Python and OpenCV. We are going to build a posture corrector so you can go from looking like this, oh, it's so bad to put up on screen, to this throughout the day. This was something I was really struggling with for a while. I work from home, I'm always on my computer, and I catch myself, you know, typing an email, coding, editing a video, and I'm slumped over. Like, I just, I look like, Hunchback, I don't even know. Isn't that a cartoon at one point? I think so. And I wanted something that was constantly running on my computer that would monitor my posture. And that is what we are building today. This project is super easy, so it's a really good way if you are looking to stand out in the job market or you want to literally just build something like I did to monitor your posture, something super useful and helpful, it is for you. All right, let's just jump into it. Okay, before we jump into the code, let's go through a little, I feel like I'm like back in school, I made a little presentation of some of the main libraries and packages we are going to use. And I wanted to really dive into why exactly we chose these packages and libraries for a few reasons. One, because we use OpenCV a lot for these projects. It's really fun and you really need to understand as to why the tech behind so let me take a step back here. You really need to understand the reasoning behind the tech we use. And that is what I'm hoping by going through some of these will help uh, really, what's the word? Bring into our brain. You know what? I have tea, no, coffee and tea here. Clearly I need more because we're not fully woken up yet. All right, first on those OpenCV. So as you can see on screen, OpenCV, you can think of like a toolbox for working with images and videos. Now, what exactly though it does is that it helps capture video from our webcam. Now, the really cool thing with OpenCV is if you have your phone by you, it's a good thing and a not so good thing, but something to be very aware of. My phone is connected to my computer sometimes. And when that is the case, my phone will, the OpenCV when I'm running a program on my computer, will try and open it up, my webcam on my phone. So that can be really interesting if you want to build something mobile first, but it's also important to note if you're following along and you're not seeing your webcam open up on your computer, it's probably because what is happening to you is what happened to me, it's trying to open it up on your phone. Just a little side note. So OpenCV is really your gateway into computer vision and it makes it so accessible and easy. You can kind of think of it as the eyes of our application. Thank you for coming to my presentation. We got more. All right, next up is MediaPipe. MediaPipe is like a smart assistant you can kind of think of that can recognize parts of body in images. So we need this for our posture uh, correction app because it needs to recognize things such as our ears, our shoulders. And you can kind of think of it like the brain that understands body positions. So media pipe, body positions. I don't know what the hands are, but you get the point. I'm so proud of this little presentation I made, okay? Next up is NumPy. Oh, the internet really got me when I said NumPy. That was a bad day. Anyways, NumPy is like a super calculator. So it really helps us with a lot of different math equations or doing math quickly. This is super helpful if you are someone who wants to build with computer vision or AI, but you don't wanna spend hours and hours with a lot of these equations. And I mean, why would you when there are tools out there like NumPy? In this case, we use it to calculate averages and work with angles. So the average of our shoulder, that's one of the main calculations. And then of our ears, our little ears as well. Now we have play sound. Play sound, this I just added in. This is not mandatory, but I really wanted it to be, like this program to be useful. So when I am standing at my desk typing away and I do slouch or kind of go to the side, what will happen is we will hear a ding sound when uh, it's not good posture anymore. And that's because I really actually am going to be using this program pretty much on an ongoing basis running it to make sure the posture, oh, here we go. Posture is very good. I should be running it right now. All right, those are the main, is there one more package? Let's see, play sound. Oh yeah, and then OS, which is a very popular and common one. Uh, it's basically like a helper about the computer's file system. So if you wanna access any of your file systems on your computer, OS is the way to go. All right, now we are done. Thank you for coming to my presentation. Let's jump into the code. All right, so you can see here, we have imported all of our uh, packages that we just went through. And then what I did is I ran it through Claude because I wanted to have, um, what is it, comments based on each of the code, like what they're doing in different steps. For me, that really helps it. And I used Claude quite a bit making this application to begin with. It's very, this application, much more so than I would say other ones we've made in the past is it really gets more into the computer vision side of things, especially when it comes to more so, let me go down. We'll start from the top, but more so 
things like this, calculations, calibration. I mean, it kind of gets into the nitty gritty. So what I did is I kind of mapped it out as to where I wanted this application to go to, what I wanted it to do, and then started coding. I got to a certain point and then I said, all right, it's time to use our good friend Claude to help us out and that is exactly what it did. So for when we're going through this code, please keep it in mind that I did use Claude to help us with this. I'm not someone who's gonna sit here and be like, oh, I'm too good to use Claude. But do as much as you can on your own, follow along with this as much as you can because it's that muscle memory of coding on your own, even though there are so many AI applications out there to help you, that will make you such a good coder. And if you're watching this and you're not a coder, but you just wanna build this application to use it for posture, then, I mean, same kind of thing though. It's always a good skill to pick up. And I linked the GitHub uh, repo down below so you can always just clone that and start running the program. All right, so first thing we do though is initialize the media pipe pose and webcam. So the first thing this will do is it actually, when it runs, it will take, at first it didn't do this, but I wanted it to take what is considered good posture to you because what was happening is before I had this where it would set the bar as to what is considered good posture, it would think even if I'm slouching over that that's good posture just because it didn't have that baseline. So that is what we did here. Media Pipe, as a reminder, is a library or sorry, package where it will really help identify different body parts, which in this case does more so uh, the shoulders and ears. So you can see here, that's exactly what we are doing. We are initializing the Media Pipe pose and webcam. So we're starting up the webcam here, getting everything started. Now, if we scroll down, there's a bit more logic. So while the webcam is opened, Make sure that it's able to read. And then also too, what color is the frame going to be? So here we are setting the color for the OpenCV webcam, the frame of it, and then also the results. So if results pose landmarks, then we will move on to step two, which is the pose detection. So this is really extracting key body landmarks. And this is of course using a lot of the um, media pipe. And now in this case, we're just calling it MP um, and really getting the left ear, the right ear, right shoulder. Actually, you know what? This brings up a good question. We'll run it in a sec here, but when I was testing it, I had my hair, I had my hair pulled back like this so it could see my ears, but I'm curious to see what it does when it cannot see my ears. I think it should still work. It might just not be as accurate. So right here, once again, this is extracting key body landmarks. This for me, I mean, it's not that complex of code, but it definitely was where I leaned on Claude. I'm not an expert with this package. I knew what I wanted to identify when you think of posture, that's the main thing. So you could take the same code and apply the media pose package, but say you wanted to check if your dog um, can stand on two legs. It's basic, well, I don't know if that would work. I don't think it's only human body parts maybe, but if you wanted to see if you were standing on one leg, detect that for example, then you could switch these body parts to what you are using, if that makes sense. Next is the angle calculation. And this is where things uh, initially got a little bit challenging because for this calculation, without the step one calibration, which we initially spoke about, it was getting, it was thinking that no matter where, what I was doing, it was accurate. So come down here is step number one, calibration. And this, if it's not calibrated, then it will kind of set the baseline for you. But if it is calibrated, then it will know what the baseline is. And that was super helpful for me because otherwise it was a mess. So this is pretty um, straightforward, this portion of it anyways. Once again, wherever there is colors, you can always switch it to whatever you want. I think for this one, I did pretty simple yellow, blue, white. We'll see in a sec here, I forget. And then the fun part, which is drawing different angles. Uh, you know, I use it to detect my facial features as well, going downwards. Then the fun part, which is feedback. So you can see here, poor posture will be a red color, and then good posture will be green. Very simple. This code, I mean, this is pretty much just like English language. It's very simple and straightforward. Um, and once again, go download the code that I have linked, follow along to it, break it, that's one of the biggest things, and then continue building onto it. I think there's so many different things you could build on from this. I mean, the one that I initially, or the last thing I added was for that ding to be added with play sound so I can have this running all the time when I'm building or coding actual projects, or bigger projects I should say, or bigger things, or working on takeoff or different things like that. See right now I'm doing it, I'm slouching. It's such a bad habit. Then we scroll down and then this is just putting the text on the screen, shoulder, shoulder angle and neck angle. Then display the frame. All right, 
I don't know, I'm curious to get your take. We've done coding Code With Me's many different ways. Some where we're coding and typing together, others where we're just walking through the code like we just did. What do you prefer? Do you prefer if we're typing together or just talking like this? I feel like this is better because it's a little bit more to the point. I'm always going to link the GitHub repo down below. And the best way to learn is kind of just go over everything together and then get in there yourself and start building and breaking things. But if you prefer the other way, let me know. If you prefer this way, let me know. Uh, I love making these videos and projects with you, so just let me know what you prefer. And I always try and walk through what were some of the challenges I had when making this project. All right, let's go ahead and run this. Oh crap, speaking of which, I gotta put my iPhone on airplane mode. Let's try this again. Here we go. Of course, whenever you're demoing, it doesn't want to work. It was just working, so let's see, come on. Let's give it a minute. Okay, I'm gonna put up on screen here my screen recording. For some reason, my screen recording wasn't working while I was running it this afternoon. It did this morning, so here's an earlier version of it. You can see sometimes it isn't perfect. I might have to adjust the calculations a little bit because sometimes when you turn your head, or you don't turn your shoulders as much, it doesn't set it off the bad posture. This was a really fun project. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. As a reminder, I linked down in the uh, description the GitHub link, so go download it, clone it, go try it out, build on top of it. Brings up the question, what should we build next? This was really fun. 